Calling all camps, all camps, all camps. Shalom came from Japan, all praises, all praises. Yeah, I'm calling all camps. All camps, man. Y'all seen, seen our brothers at WFI, the Watchmen, get attacked by them Palestinians in, in, in Chicago. I'm calling all camps to pull up this Saturday, man. This weekend, man, round two, goddamn. You know what I'm saying? We need to stand by our brothers and pull up. We finna pull up, all right? And we, we want round two. We want the smoke with the Palestinians, with the Israelis, calling all camps. We finna pull up. We finna pull up for our brothers at Watchmen. We finna pull up for our brothers at Watchmen. And, 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 and we going in, goddamn. We going in. I need I need about an hour and a half to, to flame them bastards. I need an hour and a half speaking time. I'm telling you that right now. We need all the brothers, all the camps to line up. I'm calling I'm calling all camps. All camps. We need to be on that front line with our brothers at Watchmen for Israel. Shout out to Naquam. Shout out to Amos. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Isaiah. Azariah, shout out to our brothers, man. We need to pull up in Chicago this weekend, Saturday. Round two, goddamn. Round two, we pulling up for our brothers, man. HOI gonna be in the building, most high willing. We finna pull up. Round two. It's crunch time. It's fourth quarter. If you scared to shoot the ball, pass it to a to pass it to a clutch shooter. You dig what I'm saying? All boots on the ground. That's right. They violated. They violated. I'm watching all the videos. I'm watching all the videos. All of our brothers, whoever can make it, we pulling up this weekend. You know what I'm saying? This weekend. Chicago. That park. Whatever that park is called. Somebody put it in the chat. Somebody put that park in the chat. We finna pull up HOI Chicago, HOI Georgia. We finna pull up. The pull up boys is pulling up. And if you pull up to this, you an honorary pull up boy. No matter what camp you are. Okay? We finna get it. That's All right, Shalom, all praise to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And this video is going to be entitled, Chief Ephraim is blowing the spark. Chief Ephraim is blowing the spark. And I will explain to you what I mean by that, because there's a scripture that describes it. Everybody knows about the video that's going pretty much viral among the Israelites. All right, Chief Ephraim is, uh, you heard it in the intro. I'm probably going to play that video so we can go point for point in it. I got a few things I want to address that he said. First, let me put a disclaimer out there. You Israelites, you are not. If you listen to GMS, you in the, you in the GMS. Of course, brothers in GMS ain't going to do it. But you GMS affiliates, you people that are just on the fringe, meaning on the outside looking in. If you follow because uh, Apostle uh, um, Rakar did a video earlier today, Elder Apostle Rakar, and it was entitled, Do Not Follow Mean the Merciless. Now, you're going to notice that in the thumbnail, I got a picture of this guy, Chief Ephraim, right beside Mean the Merciless, and they do kind of, you know, there's a little bit of a similarity. I ain't going to say he looked like the dude, but there's a very uncanny, you know, similarity in the two individuals. And I also put the clip in in the beginning of Mean the Merciless, <laughs> which I, just, I found that hilarious. You know, I found it hilarious. Chief Ephraim popping up out of the blue with a damn red filter. Why Why would you, if, if nothing else, why, why you got a red filter? If you know psychology and uh, I don't know what you would call it. But if you know psychology, colors carry vibration. Like you would have a blue 
you know, more calm and relaxing. You got a green that would do something. You have a red that also, that's why bullfighters have a red cape. You know, that's why bullfighters have a red cape. So it's very, very curious, you know, choice of a fucking red filter to put in your video. That's, that's suspicious to me right off the bat. It does, you know, just a lot of odd things going on among the Israelites. I'm no stranger to this guy, Chief Ephraim. All right. Normally they're just laying low. He's not really on the scene. He's not, you know, not too involved all this year when prophecy was coming out and we was going back and forth about the mark of the beast. He was nowhere to be found. But as soon as some type of ruckus pops off, then you see this guy, Mr. Tough Guy, you know, very, very odd to me. Very odd to me. Now, anyway, in Salakia, kind of all over the place. But I want to address this, and you know, and Salakia for not uh, addressing it before now. It's kind of late, but I did have, I worked today, and then when I got off a regular job, I had to go to the family business and work. So, you know, kind of late getting in the house and then getting settled. Anyway, you brothers out there, don't follow this bullshit, okay? I'm going to be very honest and frank with you if I have to. If I have to cuss you out, Chief Ephraim, at the end of the day, it's not because I hate you, but you make a lot of bonehead decisions. And this is another one. Now, we already did the video addressing Watchmen for Israel, that folly of them even going out there. They should have they never been there. And then you come back and you double down on the Chief Ephraim and you give advice and you're blowing the spark. Let's read the scripture now and then we'll play the video. You saw it in the intro, but I want to address it point for point. A few things that he said. This is Ecclesiastes 28 and 12. It says, if thou blow the spark, it shall burn. If thou spit upon it, it shall be quenched. And both of these come out of thy mouth. What does it mean? If you light a, a you know, I know you've seen the old movies, Bugs Bunny or whatever, old cartoons. They would light a fuse, the dynamite would be, you know, a long ass fuse leading up to the dynamite about to be an explosive situation. And what would they do? They will they will first they try to blow the spark out. And that would make it make it increase and go faster. So then what would they do to try to pour something on it or spit on it to try to put it put it out? So this is likened into that. You being a leader, Chief Ephraim, you supposed to spit on the spark. You supposed to make shit die down, de-escalate, but instead you're hyping it up. And is and I gotta be honest. It sounds very agent-like. I mean, it is agent-like. And we all have our own private, uh, what's the word, uh, premonitions or opinions of what we think about that old shit that happened between uh, HOI and the white boys up at there at the Capitol. We all have our suspicions about Chief Ephraim. I'll just be the first, or I won't be the first, but I'll be up front and say, I think the guy's an agent. Elder Priest of Bach, you're supposed to, you know, get on this guy, tell him to shut the hell up. Because for one, he was absent for a long time. He fell out of the truth. Then he popped back up a few years later, causing all kind of ruckus. Now here he is again, calling all camps. Like, you know, like you special or something. You ain't special, Chief Ephraim. You won't have no rank like that. You can't call, you know, all different Israelites all over to come together. And then you leading people into a, leading men astray. To go up there and be involved in that dumb shit. Anyway, I'm going to read that again. It says, if thou blow the spark, it shall burn. If you blow a spark that's lit already, like if you light a match to a piece of wood and you're trying to start a fire, what do you do? You blow it to keep it burning, so to make it accelerate until such a time you can ignite the rest. If thou spit upon it, it shall be quenched. And both of these come out of thy mouth. Both spit and air can come out of your mouth. And really, Chief Ephraim and you other leaders could defuse that whole situation by telling them young guys they was going off. GMS should not have been the only Israelites to tell them dudes they had no business being up there. They had no business confronting no Palestinians, being at no damn rally, being at no demonstration. You should have never had your black asses there. But instead of doing that, you're going to blow the spark. And then make it seem as though you're trying to galvanize men to come to these guys' defense. What would be the point? It's very stupid. It's foolhardy. I think that's a word Apostle Hart used earlier. Very foolhardy. You had no business being there to begin with. And now you want to go back 
I want to go back up there for round two, as you say. Let's play this dude's video. I'm going to listen in. I'm going to stop it. Camps, all camps, all camps. Shalom came from Japan. All praises. All praises. Yeah, I'm calling all camps. All camps, man. You know, one thing I don't like. I hate hearing the Israelites say to another Israelite, all praises. What are you saying all praises to him for? All praises go to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai only. When you say all praises, it's almost like you praising the individual. What the fuck you talking about? Salakia, Salakia. I said I wasn't going to do that. Y'all seen, seen our brothers at WFI, the watchmen, get attacked by them Palestinians? First off, your brothers are those who believe in the same doctrine as you. We can say we brothers nation, nationally, but in the spirit, we're not brothers. We, we, we brothers according to our nationality as Israelites. That's, that's according to the, our flesh. But in the spirit, we are not brothers. Watchmen for Israel believe something completely different than we believe. How can you classify men as brothers when they don't even believe the same thing as you? They believe something completely different. All fast doctrine. Well, maybe y'all believe the same thing. They are not our brothers. In, in, in Chicago, I'm calling all cans to pull up this Saturday, man. This weekend, man. Round two, goddamn. You know what I'm saying? We need to stand by our brothers and pull up. We finna pull up. All right? And we, we want round two. We okay, so what happened in round one? In round one, which is a fighting term... There was a brawl. There was a melee. There was there was a physical confrontation. So you want a part two of that? Is that what you mean? Because that's certainly what it sounds like. Listen further. You want the smoke with the Palestinians, with the Israelis? Wait a minute. You had a confrontation. Them brothers had a confrontation with the Palestinians. Why are you mentioning the Israelis? They didn't have nothing to do with it. Why are you saying you want the smoke with the Palestinians? With the Israelis. See that? That's that's very odd. You have to listen to what individuals say. You can't be so stupid. You can't be fucking dumb. Define. Let me see here. What does it mean? Uh, Wanting smoke. So you can't always go by. You have to look at everything. Wanting smoke meaning. The term smoke is slang for conflict, beef, or heat. So when you say we want a round two and we want all the smoke, you're saying you want conflict, you're saying you want beef, you want heat. Because in round one, what happened? Did the, did the Palestinians pull their book out and go back and forth with you while you read scriptures? No, they didn't. They spit on you. They fought you. They threw things. They made a they made a ruckus. That's what they did. So you're saying you want smoke. That means conflict, beef or heat. That's what it is. And we want the smoke is pretty much asking whatever happens that day, whether you got to pay a bill, whether you got to go to work, whether you got, well, I don't know if that applies. What does we want smoke mean? Thanks to athletes use the phrase in trash talk. We want all the smoke is most often used to mean your team is ready to take on any challenger. That's kind of what it means. And when he's saying it, look, we want all the smoke meaning or origin. We want all the smoke as a hip hop phrase used by a member of a group to signal they are ready to battle. You want smoke? Urban Dictionary. dictionary a casual phrase or invitation for someone who wants to fight. There it is. Now, Chief Ebert is going to try to soften this by saying he needs a half, an hour and a half to speak. Eh, you're just trying to throw people off. We know what you meant. Calling all camps. We finna pull up. We finna pull up for our brothers at Watchmen. We finna pull up for our brothers at Watchmen. And it's a lock here. Calling all camps, all camps, all camps. We going in. I need. I need about a right, and we we want round two. We want the smoke with the Palestinians, with the Israelis. And like I said, that's curious to me. Why are you mentioning the Israelis? They didn't have anything to do with it. It was between the Palestinians 
and these wayward Israelites. Why are you mentioning the Israelis? That's very odd. Calling all camps. We finna pull up. We finna pull up for our brothers at Watchmen. We finna pull up for our brothers at Watchmen. And 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 we going in, goddamn. We going in. I need I need about an hour and a half to, to flame them bastards. Now you talking about speaking the word, but at first you wasn't. Really what he was doing, he's mixing, he throwing, he throwing catchphrases out there, buzzwords, but then he also trying to throw you off by saying it like he just meaning for it to be like you going out there for peace. You're going to speak the word. What would be the point of going back up there? And, and, and having some kind of unity camp in the presence of the Palestinians. Why would you do that? Unless you're going for revenge. And revenge wouldn't involve speaking the word because, you know, the uh, confrontation wasn't over the word to begin with. They weren't like you went there and they took the Quran out and then you had the Bible and you were reading from the Bible, but then they overcame you because they were reading from the Quran. Now you're going to go back for round two so you can show them that you really got the precepts together and you're going to destroy them in the Quran and in the, and in the Bible. That's not, that would be what round two would be if you were talking about something spiritual. You ain't fooling nobody, man. You're going out there in the hopes that they come, that the Palestinians come through and that something else jump off. And this time you'll feel like it's more even. Uh, give me a break, man. It's foolish. I need an hour and a half speaking time. I'm <laughs> telling you that right now. We need all the brothers, all the camps to line up. I'm calling, I'm calling all camps. Really? Like Apostle, Elder Apostle Rakat said, who are you, Chief Evil? You don't have enough salt in the game to even try to pull that off. <laughs> like we're going to listen to you. What have you ever done for us that we would listen to you? What have you done in the Israelite ministry where everybody's going to listen to you? You agent. You agent. All camps. We need to be on that front line with our brothers at Watchmen for Israel. Shout out to Naquam. Shout out to Amos. So in other words, then, even if Israelites going off, you're going to still back them up. Even if they being wicked. Just because they're Israelites, you're going to back them up anyway. Amazing. Don't the scriptures say following out a multitude to do evil? Yeah, it does. In Exodus 23. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Isaiah, Azariah. Shout out to our brothers, man. We need to pull up in Chicago this weekend, Saturday. Round two, goddamn. Round two, we pulling up for our brothers, man. HOI going to be in the building. Most high willing, we finna pull up. Round what building you going to be in? It's going to be outside. I get that that's a phrase, but why, why use that? HOI gonna be in the building. <laughs> it's gonna be outside. You ain't gonna even gonna be in no building. Round two. It's crunch time. It's fourth quarter. If you scared to shoot the ball, pass it to a to pass it to a clutch shooter. So it being the fourth quarter, what does that mean? That means it's near the end. So if it's near the end, what should we be doing? We should be prophesying the word, right? Not going to a foolhardy confrontation. A rally, a demonstration to cause another riot. If it's the fourth quarter, should we be getting ready for the coming of the Lord? What the fuck is going to face some Palestinians, all of which the ones that was there last week probably won't even be there this week? Why would you go out there and do that? Why would you do that? It's the fourth quarter. If you were scared, come on, man. This is some stupid shit. This is some nigga shit. You dig what I'm saying? Ball boots on the ground. That's right. They violated. They violated. I'm watching. All the videos. So they violated, but the brothers that was out there, they wasn't in the wrong. They wasn't in the wrong for being out there. See, this is stupid. You're going to follow stupid leadership, and you're going to get led into an ambush or worse. I don't know what's worse than an ambush, but you're going to get led into some shit that you cannot get out of. Listening to stupid leadership who's always absent. Let me get it, Shell. Fall into just bear bear with me here. <clears throat> Damn it. Fall into Nope, see nobody listens when we come with the sound doctrine and wise words. They don't listen. Luke six thirty nine. 
and he spake a parable unto them, Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Chief Ephraim is blinded to the fact that those brothers WFI was wrong. Matthew 15 and 14, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. And that's all there is to it. You don't know what you're going to walk into. You got all those men, these young men who believe that they're doing the right thing. You won't even tell them that they're going off, that it should have nothing to do with it. You won't reroute them. You are blowing the spark, Chief Ephraim. And like I said, you know, that's just me saying that you're an agent. You might not be an agent, but at the end of the day, ain't no need to get mad because that's some agent shit that you're doing. There are going to be agent provocateurs out there on the streets. And if you're not one of them, it would seem like you would advise the men, you know, to, have to, to, to not go about this foolhardy concept of trying to go and confront nobody. But you ain't going to do that because you're a clout chaser. To lock you. All camp. Saying ball boots on the ground. That's right. They violated. They violated. I'm watching all the videos. So they violated. What you gonna do about it? You think that? So let me get it straight. They violated. You're gonna go back with the Bible and you're gonna teach and preach from the Bible, and that's gonna in your mind, that's gonna clear up the violation that they violated. It doesn't make any sense. You going there for a confrontation because you want all the smoke. I'm watching all the videos. All of our brothers, whoever can make it, we pulling up this weekend. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This weekend. Chicago. That park, whatever that park is called. Somebody put it in the chat. Somebody put that park in the chat. We finna pull up HOI Chicago. HOI Georgia. We finna pull up. The pull-up boys is pulling up. And if you pull up to this, you are honorary pull-up boy. No matter what camp you are. Okay? We finna get it. That's right. What you about, what you about to get? You about to get locked up. That's what you about to get. You about to get the ministry blame even further. Don't follow me and the merciless in, into a foolish battle. Men of the Lord are going to teach the truth. You're going to preach the truth. That's what you're going to do. And like I tell you, Chief Ephraim is blowing the spark. He's not hes not trying to quench it. He's blowing the spark. Don't listen to that guy. You're a fool. And really what you're going there for is for revenge. And the Lord said, don't take revenge. This is Ecclesiastes 28, verse 1. He that revengeth shall find vengeance from the Lord. And he will surely keep his sins in remembrance. If you take revenge on somebody, the Lord is going to take vengeance on you. It just said it right there so plain. Now I want to go back. So it was Ecclesiastes 28 and 12. What I want to do is get the good news translation on Ecclesiastes 28 and 12. I'm just interested in what that version will say. <clears throat> and brothers, please bear with me here. I mean, of course, this is all emotional shit, but I don't try to be an emotional person because you can't think straight. But it pisses you off. Seeing these Israelites make a fool of, you know, out of other Israelites and try to drag them into that bullshit, it would have been real easy for Chief Ephraim to just tell them guys, you know, it's better to avoid conflict. You being an older man in the truth, maybe they would listen. Ecclesiastes 28 and 12 from the Good News Translation, you can blow on a spark to make it glow or you can spit on it to put it out. Either way, you do it with your mouth. You do it with your mouth. That's the, that's the end of it. See, both of these come out of that mouth. You got the ability, Chief Ephraim, to blow the spark and make shit ignite further. Or you got the ability to quench that shit. You can dead it. You can tell them guys they're going off. And, the, and you can tell other Israelites you have no business of getting involved in it. But instead, you're going to let young men who was raised, most of them raised by single parent homes, by their mothers in a single parent home, which they're emotional as shit already. You're going to tell them that they're going to go back and get an opportunity to have revenge because that's what you're going there for. You're really going there to get your lick back because you was offended that some Palestinians, you know, uh, was messing with them brothers. And, and on top of all that, if you saw the videos that you said, 
The brothers really whooped them Palestinian dudes' ass. You had the one Jake that had his eye split or whatever, but that happens in a fight. For the most part, after the brothers started beating the shit out of them Palestinians, they didn't even want no more. They didn't want no more. They just wanted to throw shit and, and be unruly. That's all they wanted to do. Everybody know Palestinians ain't no match for Jake, but yet you're going to still try to go there anyway. You should just be happy. Like Elder Yashawama said, you had your little face off or whatever. He didn't say it like that, but I'm saying it like that. You had your little face off. You had your brawl. Okay, you lived to fight another, lived to fight another day. You escaped and nobody got hurt. Here's something for you, Chief Ephraim. Let's say you guys do go up there and you meet up. You have no ability to control what's going to happen. Too many different variables to, to, uh, to try to look after. You may have men with bad hearts or asthma. Any type of condition could happen. Somebody wind up grabbing their chest or falling on, falling on, twist their knee and bump their head, anything. If any person get hurt, it's going to be on you, Chief Ephraim. Any blood gets spilled, it's on you. On either side. Because that's what they're going to do. When you go to court, they're going to pull up this video and they're going to say, was there any way you could have avoided this situation? And then you're going to try to plead your little cause and they're going to say, nope, it was premeditated. You invited men to come. You could have easily have avoided the shit. Never fails. But I know it's going to fall on deaf ears because Jake is too damn busy trying to assert yourselves as some important men. And then you always leave out the scriptures when it come, when it doesn't go with your uh, with your narrative. This is Romans 12, verse 17. Now, really, it's speaking of with your fellow Israelite, but it's going to go on and tell you about all men. It says, recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men, if it be possible. As much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. You're supposed to live at peace with all men. And, and yeah, you had a confrontation and a little, a little scuffle with the Palestinians before. But now everybody got a chance to go home. Nobody died. Nobody got injured or seriously injured or wounded. Right? So now to go back home, to be able to be fine and good and then to go back into that atmosphere again is very stupid. It's very stupid. And it's, and it's wicked on top of that. You're going against the Bible. It says, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Did you just hear that? Avenge not yourself. We want round two. Round two sounds like you're going back to avenge yourself. Going off. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. There you go. The Lord said if somebody did you wrong, they did you dirty, he's going to pay them back. Either you believe that. And the Lord is telling the truth or you don't believe it and you think that he's lying. And if you go back to try to take revenge, round two, because round two is a continuation of round one. And what happened in round one was a fucking melee and a brawl. So round two is going to be a continuation of that, which means you're seeking revenge, which means the Lord's not dealing with you. And he's going to have the final say so. Stupid. Very stupid. I'm going to read this Colossians 4 and 5. When it comes to leadership and men following those leaders, this is what you're supposed to do. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. You walk in wisdom as a leader, as a leader of men. You're supposed to walk in wisdom because you know that they're going to listen to you. They're going to look up to you. And if you tell them something, they're going to trust that you tell them the right thing. That's why I said you are blowing the spark. You are guilty. You are guilty. You need to reroute that whole shit. And don't get all messed up because I said you was an agent. You're doing agent shit. What the fuck would an agent do other than try to lead men into a, into a burning house? Is basically what you're doing, Chief Ephraim. You know better than that. I ain't even going to say no more on it. This, and you do look like mean to merciless. And it's hilarious. You know, I remember you got so mad at me over that whole Mark of the Beast stuff. And you making videos about y'all and the Mark of the Beast and that whole trying to build... A Hebrews like community down there in Georgia. You want to you actually want to box. <laughs> you want to get gloves and set up an event so me and you can box. You a carnal dude, man. You a carnal dude. And I'm never I'm never gonna not say that I think you're an agent. And I do think your ass is an agent. There ain't no no hatred shit. It's just I believe my own fucking eyes. I believe you're an agent, Chief Ephraim. 
And other Israelites, they're not going to believe it because they're stupid. But that's okay. They don't have to believe it. That every person that listened to Chief Ephraim above, listen to what's in the scriptures, may you get exactly what you're looking for, whatever that is. Whatever that is. Don't listen to me, the merciless brothers.